Now, Sig Ziegler, he was a different kind of guy. For in terms of just sheer talent, he had us all beat. Uh, he was from uh, Mississippi, and he just had that voice. Uh, he had that, um, that southern manner about him and that southern wit that was fantastic. I like Zig Ziglar a lot. He just, he just had a, a way that everyone, everyone liked to listen to Zig Ziglar. But Zig Ziglar didn't care for Mormons. And he had said that many times, not in his speeches, but it was kind of well known. He was a Baptist. He was on the board of directors of Baylor University, which is a Baptist university in Texas. And one day he invited me to come to his, uh, his uh, home on a Wednesday night and he'd be going to church and teaching a Sunday school class on Wednesday evening. Now I can't remember what happened. I never made it to that invitation. I don't understand to this day what happened, but something came up that interrupted that. But I did make it one day to his office complex. And I remember he had a little tiny room, very small little area, just about, you know, not just a little area. And it was his prayer room. And he'd periodically go there and be by himself and there's no way that people could interrupt him and he would communicate in prayer uh, to his Father in Heaven. I thought that was pretty good. I liked that. But we'd bump into each other periodically and say, Nah, Doug, I want you to come and hear me teach Sunday school. <laughs> and uh, so it was kind of a nice, nice relationship. Earl Nightingale had a partner named a Conant. Conant, a Nightingale Conant it was called. Nightingale produced the material. Conant ran the business and sold the material. And all kinds of uh, tapes and records and things would go out from that. So I get a call from Mr. Conant wanting to know if I'd be willing to buy their business. The reason is that both Nightingale and Conant were getting up in age and they felt I was the guy that could carry on and that I could change the name if need be. So I flew to Chicago is where they're headquartered. They're in that uh, beautiful building uh, which I think is the prettiest building in uh, Chicago. That life insurance building is the life insurance I'll think of here in a second. It's a beautiful building. And uh, clear at the top. And what a view. But uh, after going over the books so somewhat and looking at the business, I felt that's in Chicago. I live in Salt Lake City. It's not going to work. Now, this took place after I came home from my mission. This, this going to Chicago and talking to uh, Conant about uh, buying their business. And so there was a, quite an interplay. Now, Robert Schuler also came from the Dutch Reformed Church. Robert Schuler was different than all the rest. Robert Schuler had a manner and uh, about him, and where we got together, following you know we would get we'd all talk to each other during the time you know as during the day of giving the speeches. But he wanted to talk to me, so uh, I made a special trip to Los Angeles. They picked me up in a car and drove me to Orange County where he had his uh, 
his uh, headquarters, and uh, his Crystal Cathedral was called. It's a magnificent building. My gosh, it was something else. And next to it was his office complex, which was a, a rectangular-shaped building, and it was also all glass. And he had a, a, a beautiful, I felt so anyway, statuary of Job. It's very, very big. And uh, there in the uh, uh, yard, we talked. I learned something about him. He told how he was able to bring together the money of what was involved to build that crystal cathedral. And there, we were up there in his office, and on that upper floor, we could look over all that entire complex. The Crystal Cathedral, the Statuary of Job, places for the cars to park, lots of green grass and flowers and et cetera, et cetera. And then he made this statement. Look and see what I have done. And it hit me just like that. There's no Mormon can say that. Look and see what I have done in terms of building a building. I can't say that. It's, it's integrated. Because where the money comes from, comes from the church fund. And the money comes in from all the membership. They build the buildings. All of us participate in the building of the buildings. That's how it works. It is a, uh, an effort that is a major commonality between all of us who pay tithing. They get the buildings built and the work goes forth. So, yes, we're individuals and we're participating but none of us can say, look and see what I have done in overlooking that Crystal Cathedral. Well, he had a TV program called The Hour of Power. He was on every Sunday morning. It had a colossal viewership. The problem was that he was starting to get older himself. So then he would bring in, he started to bring in his family and starting off first with his son to take his place. And I can see him wearing these robes on that hour of power. Now when he spoke, he did not wear the robes on the rally. But no one moved around on the stage like he did. He would not stand behind a, a podium or a microphone. The microphone went with him but he'd move around and he was very, very demonstrative and very, very fascinating to listen to and to watch. He's the one who made the statement, inch by inch, anything's a cinch. I'll never forget hearing him say that. And it's true. But in meeting him, all he talked about was me, 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 me much more so than any of the rest. And the contrast between him and Norman Vincent Peale was colossal. Yet their origination is from the same Protestant church, the Dutch Reformed Church, which I'd never heard of before. Well, I know that between them, uh, Dr. Peale uh, never really, and I got this from some pretty good sources, was pleased with uh, Robert Schuller uh, and, was, and was concerned. But what happened was the son, when he came on board, the TV ratings went down. And then an argument took place, or this major disagreement between the two, the father and the son. Then he brings on the daughter. Then the, the ratings fall even further till he's off TV. Today, the Crystal Cathedral 
and the land and the statuary and the office complex is owned by the Catholic Church. He lost it all.